So thank you very much for the introduction, Thomas. Um, my name's Adam Tuff. I'm an ex-graduate student of the University of York. In fact, I think some of the academics thought they'd got rid of me and I <laughs> keep coming back like a boomerang. Um, I'm a gamma scientist at Chromec PLC. I love my job for three reasons. First off is my job title makes me sound like Bruce Banner. <laughs> um, secondly, um, I get to do something I love. I'm extraordinarily passionate about physics and I'm very fortunate to have been able to move into nuclear physics and I, I do this for a living now. And thirdly, I also still have this connection to the University of York. I'm very, very passionate about outreach and inspiring and enthusing the next generation of physicists to go on not only into industry but into various other forms of academia and to then encourage the next generation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my academic path, how I got from um, where I was to where I am, a little bit about Chromec, what we do, and some of the research that I do and how, how I've used my skills that I learned at an academic level. And then I'm also going to talk about our relationship with York. We have what's called an IPS with York, which is an industrial partnership scheme. We've also had several KTPs, which have been mentioned as well, which are knowledge transfer pro projects. Um, so I started out um, at the University of York many years ago, X number of years ago, where X is a two-digit integer now, unfortunately. Um, I, did, I read the experimental physics course here, I did the MPhys, so I was here for four years. I took one year out, decided I hated the job that I had in the NHS and came back to physics. And I, also, I came back to York to do my PhD, I was here for another four years and then I did a postdoc position as well, so clocking over ten years at York and I, um, I can say any excuse to come back here because it, it is a fantastic university. Um, so. I then moved on to Chromec, which is a company that uh, the University of York and the Department of Physics, particularly the nuclear group, have a very strong relationship with. Um, Chromec themselves are a spin-out of Durham University. They started life as Durham Scientific Crystals. So this was a, a, an, an academic department that found a niche in industry where they could make money out of this. Um, and they primarily developed cadmium zinc telluride, which is a, a scintillator material. They mastered the process of growth of these materials and then learned that this was a material that uh, could benefit the nuclear physics industry as it's a, as, as, as a um, radiation detector. Um, they're now listed on London IAM, so you can now invest in Chromex. So if you fancy dabbling in the stock markets, you can. Um, we're focused on three main markets, and those are primarily nuclear detection, which is where my expertise lies, but we also... Um, excel at security screening and other things like medical imaging, particularly pet imaging, um, and various other things that are based upon the technologies that we develop at Chromec as well. Um, we do various other things. We're, we've got a lot of high-end user products. These are bespoke products that are not just developed as, a, as a, an on-the-shelf product, but also as a, um, a, a, a designed particularly to meet a, a user need or a, a, an end purpose. Um, and we also develop all of our OEMs, so our original engineering modules. That's all developed in-house. Everything from the physics at the front end, which is the, the scintillator crystals or the semiconductors, the technology that lies behind those, all the way through to the integrated circuits that sort of run these bits of equipment, all the way through, again, to the manufacturing, the design of the casings and, and, and all those things. And we have four sites around the world. We have two in the UK now. So I'm, I'm based at the Sedgefield office, which is uh, in County Durham. Sedgefield's a beautiful little uh, country village. And we also have an office in Huddersfield, which is where our neutron development uh, occurs. And we also have two U US-based offices as well. Um, one in California and the other one in Pittsburgh. And they do a lot of our distribution in the United States, which is one of our big companies. And as you can see, we deal with a lot of big blue chip companies, Dorthrop Grumman, NASA, uh, Itachi. We have connections all around and we've worked with them on a whole host of other things, not only just to build them products, but things like knowledge transfer projects, developing the technology behind those things. As I said, we've all got many research links as well. One of, one of the things that we strive to sort of build is a strong academic relationship because again, a lot of the, the, the knowledge base is based in these sort of very, very high uh, caliber universities around, around the world and around the, uh, 
around the UK particularly. Um, University of York is one of our favourite partners. I work a lot with York. Um, but we also work with Durham, University of Surrey, and we even work with um, our stateside partners as well. Um, some of them you might know, Los Alamos. You might notice it established 1943. You can guess what they were developing. Um, so we work with a lot of different partners for a lot of different purposes. So just as a, a brief history of our company, we started out in 2003, again, a spin-out from the University of Durham. Um, we've got a first DOD, which is Department of Defence contract, back in 2005. Uh, sort of, we've built on that uh, knowledge since then. Um, we identified a need uh, in 2008, this is shortly before I started, for a, what was a bottle scanner. So these things are now being rolled out. If any of you have been through Dubai Airport, you can now take your bottle of Coke through the airport because there's now the facility to do that. You can scan the bottle and it'll let you know if it's Centex or not. Um, that came out of a, 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 essentially a need. There was a couple of foiled terrorist plots that happened in 2006. Various people trying to smuggle uh, high purity or high, um, highly enriched uranium out of various nuclear reactors and take things on planes and smuggle them through ports. So again, we designed these products around there was a security need, so we built the bespoke solution for that. Um, we acquired uh, Nova R&D in 2010. They became our sort of a US branch for research. Um, and then we've had quite a shift in the market in 2011. Um, Fukushima particularly uh, has influenced a lot of our products that we've designed. We, we build a lot of um, bespoke bits of kit for a lot of the guys who are out there doing some of the decommissioning or attempting the decommissioning at uh, the Fukushima plant. Uh, we've got all sorts of nice little toys. We've got some of our detectors on hexacopters and drones flying around the plants as well, doing various radiological measurements. And we also have a lot of products as well that are based around uh, health and safety as well. So we have food scanners that identify particularly dangerous isotopes, things like iodine-131 and cesium-137 that are readily taken up in the body and are readily produced by um, fission fallout from these uh, damaged reactors. So we're able to provide solutions that help to, to not only benefit the security and nuclear industries, but the health industries as well. Um, in the last year, we've acquired EV, which is our company over in the States who are producing our cadmium zinc telluride. And then we've just floated on the London stock market as well, which was la last year. So as I said, yeah, they've got our, our three branches there. And we also have a, a lot of distributors, particularly in Europe. We also have a lot of partners out, in, as I said, in Asia and um, in Australia as well. We have a few partners. So that's kind of a, a sort of an overview of the company itself. As I said, we're very strong. We're not just about developing the physics solution of it. We also want to develop everything from the preliminary designs, so that's the identifying materials, what type of detectors we need for a certain application, all the way through to things like the application development, so creating simulations, whether that be optical or efficiency simulations for a certain size detector, all the way through the algorithm software or the clever um, routines that run in the background of these bits of kit that help able to, uh, that allow you to do things like radioisotope identification or imagery construction if you've got something like a PET detector. Um, all the way through the systems engineering solutions, so the simple things such as the casings, which aren't as simple if you're building a radiation detector, you don't want to build it out of lead. Um, so there's various, there's, there, we've had some great ones, they built one of our detectors and the prototype came as this sort of heavy steel case and I was like, well, that's me not seeing any x-rays with this. So, uh, but we go all the way to, um, as I said, end user products, so we have specifically built devices for uh, intended purposes all the way through to we have a lot of our own bespoke components as well which again we can modify and adapt to whatever purpose they're required for and um, we also have a lot of uh, ip and again this is where we a lot of this crossover comes with the university and academia we have something on the order of 250 patents now and 160 trade secrets and they all help sort of benefit our own company, but a lot of these are also developed with, with universities as well. As I said, we have three main markets with security screening. Again, as I said, if you've been through Dubai, you might have seen some of our, um, our bottle scanners. If you've been through Teesside Airport, they're also deployed there. Um, we do a lot of uh, work with a lot of medical programs, um, particularly, as I said, developing medical probes, 
uh, based on cadmium zinc telluride. Again, we can build very, very small detectors out of those. Generally, the medical industry wants, so if, you, if you want a medical probe, you want it to be relatively small and uninvasive. And again, the nuclear field, which is everything from radiation detection all the way through to some health and safety. And my expertise primarily lies in the, the nuclear field. And again, that's just our, that's more of our business model. So um, I, th I think it was David had mentioned somebody had been talking about radiation detectors. I think that was probably mine. What I didn't tell anybody was I've had mine sat on the desk here, so it's been monitoring all of our speakers to make sure they're not radioactive. <laughs> um, this is one of the products that I've been developing while I've been here at Chromec. Um, again, it's something that I've built upon from my experience at York. So we've built two detectors. We had a, a customer come to us saying we want a high efficiency radiation detector, but we don't want the bulk of, say, a cesium iodide detector with a, with a, um, a Geiger Muller tube on the back. We don't want that big dynode um, system at the back end, and we want to be able to operate it in a magnetic field as well. So we've had to shift to a different technology in that in, and then we found this in silicon photomultipliers. So if you've ever taken apart a camera, it's very, very similar to the CCD chip that you have to see at the back of that. It's a photo sensor. So we've been able to incorporate this as part of the device. It's operated in a, in a very specific way in what's called the Geiger mode, which is very, very close to electronic breakdown. And so rather than having to have a, a dynode system to increase your pulse height, you can do this with uh, an elect electron avalanche, essentially. So that's replaced this technology, and this has allowed these devices to shrink in size to devices that are sort of 150, 200 ki grams in size. A lot of our customers are very happy with these because they can stuff them in any old corner. I think one of them sat on top of a cyclotron at the minute, making sure it's not giving off too much background, or it's monitoring background levels of radiation. And again, the sort of the evolution of these devices have been to, uh, to our next product, which is um, a, a I don't like the name of it, it's called a D3, which is a dual, it's a dual detector, and that's got both gamma ray and a neutron capability. So again, we've used a scintillator, we've used a lithium-6 um, zinc sulfide scintillator material. That's also based on our photomultiplier technology, and this has allowed both of these devices to be extraordinarily compact and contained within that. And the nice thing about these devices is that as, as the new demands come in, we can then um, adapt our technologies to this. So we built this first product as a prototype. Um, it's been clicking away, as I've said. Um, the next demand was they wanted something that was Bluetooth. They wanted to be able to communicate. So I've had my phone clicking away here. That's been taking a gamma ray spectrum. I can safely say that none of our speakers are particularly radioactive. There was a few neutron spikes when Thomas was talking. <laughs> um, so that's got, it's got various different modes that it can run on. It's very user friendly. This is one button on, so it's very hard to break. I put it in the wrong mode. Um, this reports out not only radiation intensities, but it also reports out a spectroscopic um, report as well. So it tells you what the radiation looks like, and it can do all sorts of clever things, such as identify not only if the radiation is a high level, but it can identify particular radioisotopes, um, highly enriched uranium, weapons grade plutonium and other things. So these can now talk to a huge network of satellites or what have you. They can talk with each other and they can operate in a network. And the application for these is particularly DARPA and Homeland Security. They want solutions where they can do away with the portal detectors at, uh, say, an airport or, so, or some other port. Um, so they're not confined to having to send everything through one area. They can then send a load of people armed with these devices out not particularly well versed in anything nuclear physics, and they can do all these measurements. But the people who do need to know the physics are the people developing these things back, and this is where our partnerships come in. So we, we've had several um, knowledge transfer projects with the University of York. Um, we're currently engaged in two uh, industrial partnership schemes at the moment, bo both based on uh, silicon photomultiplier technology. One particularly that I'm involved in is looking to iterate these devices even further. One of the things that we would like to do is go to an even better energy resolution. So if any of you have, have dabbled with any radiation detectors, you'll know that the better energy resolution that you have, the more you're, the more be the well, the, the, the better you are to be able to distinguish two different gamma rays from each other. This has been, this is a, this is a demand that we've had from a, a customer. 
So we're moving to these more advanced scintillator materials. And again, this is something that is, is being done as a collaborative work between York and Chromec. And it goes from everything. It's not just confined to one particular field. So there's a lot of work developing. There are the photomultipliers, how they operate, how, how they there's, a, there's a load of things built into this that are very, very crucial. And the, the physics needs to be properly understood. Um, everything from how does the resolution performance uh, differ depending on what size crystal you use, um, how many photomultipliers you need. Simple questions like this that are actually a very, very complicated problem, usually a very multi-dimensional problem, and require a, a lot of physics knowledge and mathematics background. Um, investigation of the materials that are used, um, down to things like, are they hygroscopic? Can you handle this with your hands? Would, this be able, would you be able to produce this in large numbers? And this also goes to strengths not only in the, the sort of the, in the engineering parts of this or the more, the more physical parts of this, but also to the simulation work that's involved. You don't want to be building a load of devices to find out that they don't work at the end of the day or they don't meet a, a specific specification. So again, there's a strength with, between York and Chromec um, in the simulation aspects of this. So using uh, programs, this is a Geomp 4 which can model the actual physical processes of so scintillation, scattering, and other, other interactions, optical interactions within these crystals. So you, before you even begin to build any of these devices, you can have an understanding of what you expect the response to be. And obviously, as an industrial application, that's very important. Time, time is very important, but also expenditure is very important as well. So we have a number of projects at the moment with York that are developing these. And again, the, the, the first stage starts off with some ideas on sizes, all the way through from the modeling to actually building these things and testing them in, in, in the laboratory. Um, so that's all I really wanted to say today. Um, we do have, I've had quite a few inquiries today. We do actually have a couple of graduate positions going at the moment. So if you want to visit the website, we are at the bottom, it's just www.chromec.com. We have a couple of positions that we're looking for, graduate level. A number of you have also asked about um, positions such as summer internships. Uh, we do actually take on a couple of students every year, historically, and um, we do this through an Institute of Physics program. So if, if you're interested with that, I believe Ale Alex Brabs is here as well. As well. Alex is up at the back there. She might be able to tell you a little bit more about those programs that, that we run. So um, thank you very much for your attention. and. Uh, so any questions? Yeah.